The book of Jude verse 9 alludes to a circumstance that is not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. What that present is not specified, but Michael had to fight Satan for Moses' body. But when the devil and the archangel Michael were arguing over the body of Moses, it says that Michael refrained from passing judgment in a blasphemous manner and instead said, The Lord rebuke you. This was the entirety of the verse, it did not include any speculation, continuation, or even an introductory statement. I bring the behind-the-scenes details and the omitted details of Michael's encounter with Lucifer and the dead body of Moses in this video. Another battle between angels is described by the prophet Daniel, who also sees an angel in a vision. Daniel is told by the angel Gabriel in Daniel 8 verse 16 and Daniel 9 verse 21 that the prince of Persia, a demon, resisted him until the archangel Michael intervened, Daniel 10 verse 13. Therefore, according to Book of Daniel, angels and demons engage in spiritual combat for control of people's souls and the souls of nations, while demons oppose angels and work to keep them from carrying out God's will. In light of this, and in accordance with Jude, Michael was given by God the task of caring for Moses' body, which the Almighty had already buried following Moses' passing, Deuteronomy 34 verses 5-6. As the Lord had predicted, Moses, the servant of the Lord, passed away there in Moab. He was interred in a valley next to Beth Peor in Moab, but nobody is aware of the location of his grave today. God himself had already made to rest in the book of Deuteronomy, only for Jude to occasionally make an appearance in the New Testament and tell the tale of the same corpse that had already been interred. I'll save that analysis for a different video, though. You see, there are a lot of theories as to why there was a fight over Moses' body. Satan, who has consistently accused God's people, Revelation 12 verse 10, is one possibility. In heaven, I also overheard a loud voice proclaiming, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. This was because the accuser of our brethren, who had been bringing them before our God day and night, had been brought to an end. According to some scholars, Moses' transgression at Meribah, Deuteronomy 32 verse 51, and his earlier murder of the Egyptian in Exodus 2 verse 12 prevented him from being raised to eternal life. Some people also think that the passage in Jude that states, Then he revealed to me Joshua the high priest situated before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him, is the same as Zechariah 3 verses 1 to 2. Satan was then rebuked by the Lord, who said, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. There are clear objections to this incident being the same one, though. 1. The phrase, The Lord rebuke you is the only similarity between the two passages. 2. The passage from Zechariah does not contain the name Michael. 3. Zechariah makes no reference to or mention of the body of Moses. The comparison between the passages from Jude and Zechariah is therefore unrealistic and unsupportable. Additionally, it has been asserted that Jude is quoting from an apocryphal book that contains this account and is endorsing its veracity. This exact account of Michael's battle with the devil over Moses' body is found in the book The Assumption of Moses, according to Origen an early Christian scholar and theologian, 185-254 CE. Origen believed that the account in Jude was taken from that now-lost Jewish Greek book, which was written in the first century. The story's veracity is the only important issue in contention. Jude seems to believe in the conflict between Michael and the devil, regardless of the story's origin. He describes it in the same manner in which he would have described Moses' passing or his striking of the rock. And who has proof that it is untrue? What evidence do you have to refute this? There are numerous references to angels in the Bible. There are numerous indications that both good and bad angels are involved in significant events on earth, including the existence of the Archangel Michael, the devil's frequent mention, and the existence of the Archangel Michael. Conjecture is useless because it is unclear what the specific disagreement is over Moses' body. 
We don't know if there was a disagreement regarding who got to keep the body or where it should be buried. However, there are two things we are certain of first, the Bible is infallible. The inerrancy of the Bible is one of the tenets of the Christian faith. Christians should examine scripture respectfully and fervently, and when they encounter something they don't understand, they should pray more earnestly, study more carefully, and humble themselves before God's perfect word. Furthermore, you need to realize that Jude 9's context serves as the best illustration of how Christians should approach Satan and demons, using the power of the tongue. The Impact of Spoken Language Let me stray for a moment. God, who is our Father and Creator, created us in His image and endowed us with His abilities. The capacity to create things that resemble God is one of the unique abilities that God gave to man. And interestingly, God spoke the words that formed the universe. Yes, using His own words. God made statements in Genesis when he was creating things, such as, let there be light, and obviously there was light. Even though Michael refrained from cursing Satan, he nevertheless left a lasting impression on our understanding of how to triumph over spiritual conflicts and deal with demonic forces. The battles of the spirit don't use swords, daggers, or spears. It doesn't even involve the use of contemporary weapons like our current firearms and ammunition. As Christians, we must not only address evil spirits in the name of the Lord but also correctly request the Lord's intervention in combating them if we want to triumph over them. As Christians who are blessed with the power of Christ, we should be able to cast out the demons, or even command the demons out in the name of the Lord. If a being as powerful as Michael still delayed going to the Lord in dealing with Satan. Thus, the one verse in the book of Jude that refers to this unique encounter has no further explanation in the Bible. How do we obtain the necessary background data? There is a description of it in the Testament of Moses, a Jewish work from the first century. Jude's account seems to make mention of that myth. The following Jewish writings shed some light on the foregoing because some of this testament's pages are missing. Jewish reviews on Deuteronomy Rabbah 1110 state that there was a dispute for about an hour before Moses passed away. The angel of death, who is thought to be related to Satan, the adversary, and angel Michael, who is Satan's foe, engaged in combat. Additionally, Keep in mind that Michael is revered in Jewish tradition as Israel's protector. So if he were to be believed to be battling Satan for the body of Moses, it would already be in place. According to the Targum Yonatan, Michael was assigned to watch over Moses' tomb. Michael is thought to have been assigned the duty of burying Moses in the Testament of Moses, a non-canonical text. Deuteronomy claimed that God buried him. But now we learn that Michael, not God, was given the responsibility of burying him. This already shows a discrepancy. But upon closer inspection, it is actually not a contradiction, for if God chose to send any of the angels to carry out a task in his name, then it can be said that he is the one carrying it out. It is therefore all God burying him, whether he did it alone or through Michael. Why would there be a dispute over Moses' remains? The fact that Moses was denied permission to enter the promised land could have been a sign. Because of this, Satan might have thought he could take Moses' soul and send him to hell. We don't have any additional information to back up this claim from the Bible. Perhaps God wanted us to have the writings that his servant Moses left behind. All that's left of him is that. Another argument is that Satan may have wanted to turn Moses into an idol in order to steal God's glory. Given how much the Israelites revered Moses, it will be simple to persuade them to do so. Remember that it took them a while to begin idol worshipping simply because Moses dragged out his meeting with God in Exodus chapter 32. Satan might have viewed it as a time of retaliation for everything God had accomplished through Moses, as another possibility. God recalled Satan that he had the final say, regardless of the justification. Moses was to be properly buried in line with his status as the most humble man and God's servant, and God would see to it. 
the ultimate the receiver of that honor is, of course, Jesus. Think about how close Moses was to God. God and Moses shared a close relationship. I think God wanted the best for his friend, even though he couldn't go into the promised land with the children of Israel. On the plus side, Moses did arrive in the promised land. He reappeared to face God once more on the Mount of Transfiguration.